What's up guys? It's Nicole, also known as Nikki Vegan, and today I'm going to show you how I food prep, which is kind of like meal prepping, but it's perfect for those of you who get a little bit overwhelmed by the notion of meal prep. Maybe you like the idea, but it doesn't quite seem like something that works for your lifestyle, and if that's the case, I think you might really enjoy food prepping, which is basically just making extras of the food that you're already making and having that to use throughout the week. So I'm going to show you how to turn three ingredients into nine very quick and easy meals, and I really hope you guys love it. This video is a collab with my friends Jasmine and Chris over at Sweet Simple Vegan. They are genuinely some of the nicest YouTubers I've ever met and they're so talented. They came up with a spring meal prep video that makes it super easy. All of their recipes are so delicious, you guys. Like, you're going to love it. They have a great YouTube channel, they have an ebook, a blog two different amazing Instagram accounts full of tons of vegan inspiration. So I'll make sure I put all of that in the description box below for you to check out after this video. And if you're new to this channel, I would love to have you as a subscriber. So please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And with all of that said, let's get into the video. So the way this is going to work is I'm gonna first prep the three ingredients, potatoes, onions, and carrots, and then we'll get into the recipes where I show you how to turn it into pasta, pizza, burgers, open face sandwiches, grain bowls, snacks, two minute mashed potatoes, so many things, but first we're gonna prep. So potatoes, I find that it's just as easy to make one potato as it is to make a whole big sack of potatoes. And all I do is I just wash them really well, give them a little scrub, and then I put them into a saucepan and cover them with water. Then I'm gonna put this on the heat over high heat. And once it's boiling, I just cover it, reduce the heat to medium, and then let these cook for about 20 to 25 minutes. You want them to be fork tender, but not falling apart. Allow these to cool completely and then store in an airtight container for up to a week. Cauliflower, one of those things you know you should eat, but you know, getting it all chopped up and cooking it through, adding that extra step in the middle of a busy week, not always the most appealing thing. So what I like to do is get one or even two heads of cauliflower, chop it all up, give it a light steam, and then keep that in a Tupperware container in my fridge throughout the week. Unlike the potatoes, I'm not gonna completely cover it with water. I'm just gonna do about halfway, put the lid on and let this steam until it's kind of al dente. And then I'm just gonna pop a lid on this and put this in the refrigerator and it will be ready for me to use throughout the week. Pickled red onions is a food prep staple for me. I pretty much make a fresh batch of this every other week or so because it's one of the easiest ways I can ensure that I'll be able to elevate even the most simple middle of the week dish, whether it's avocado toast or just a salad. It really enhances the flavor and it's such a great thing to have on hand at all times. So to make this, you're just going to slice the onion nice and thin and then put this into a clean container with a lid along with some apple cider vinegar, salt, maple syrup, and I like to use dill as well. So I'll put all of that in there, give it a good shake. Don't worry, all of the measurements are in the description box below and set this in the fridge overnight. What's great is overnight, it turns this really beautiful, bright, purpley pink color. It adds a really beautiful pop of color to anything that you put this on. And as you saw, it's really easy to make. So one of my favorite ways to use a meal prepped potato is to make these 15 minute potato wedges. If you were to use a raw potato, a couple things would be different. One, it would take way, way longer. And on a busy weekday, I just want good food now. I don't wanna have to wait when I don't have a lot of time, obviously. But also, do you see this texture, how smooth and creamy? That's because it has the moisture from when it was boiling. So the texture is totally different. It's really smooth and creamy and we're gonna crisp up on the outside but it's going to have that really great texture on the inside so i actually prefer when it's a pre-cooked potato versus doing this raw so not only is it faster i also think it is way more delicious so i'm just going to cut a couple of potatoes however many i like into some wedges and then i season with salt pepper paprika and garlic powder just a sprinkle and then i'll do a little bit of olive oil although this is an optional step and then i like to kind of toss to combine and when they go into the oven they need about 15 minutes we're not cooking them here they're already pre-cooked so all you have to do is crisp them up to your liking and then they are ready to serve 
On this day, I decided to serve these with my white bean guacamole. This is one of my favorite recipes. And side note, all of the sauces that you're going to see in this video are gonna be in tomorrow's video. I have five vegan salad dressings and sauces that I'm gonna share with you, but just for the sake of time, I put them in a video for tomorrow. So make sure you check that out. But I love the flavor of this with the potatoes. I put some scallion and some cilantro and red pepper flakes, a little wedge of lime on the side kind of a southwestern vibe almost like nachos so good one thing i love about meal prepped potatoes is that you don't have to peel them when you peel raw potatoes it can take forever but once they are boiled and cooled you can literally just peel the skin off even just using a spoon so it's a lot faster and it's just way easier to be honest and also if you have kids in the house that want to help in the kitchen but maybe they shouldn't be using knives or vegetable peelers this is a really great thing for them to do as well and now I'm gonna show you how to make my cauliflower mashed potatoes. And since the potatoes are pre-cooked, this is gonna to come together only in about two or three minutes. You just have to heat it through and it's ready to go. So I love this. I'm gonna take three cups of potatoes, which is about three medium potatoes, and also two cups of cooked cauliflower, which since we prepped these together, I happen to have both of them on hand. Then I'm gonna stir in five tablespoons of unsweetened almond milk, and then also one to two tablespoons of vegan cream cheese. Then just salt and pepper to taste, and we're gonna mash this up on the stove while it warms. On a busy night, like a weeknight, it's not always the most practical to make things like mashed potatoes from scratch where you have to peel the potato, let it boil, then mash it. But something like this where it only takes two or three minutes to warm through and it's super, super easy to mash, like you can have comforting, delicious, proper dinner food without really spending the time. So I think this is a great reason to food prep as often as you can when you do have the time. One of my favorite ways to use up pickled red onions is to make a grain bowl. And this is a type of meal that I'll make several times in the middle of the week just because it's really fast and easy, but it's filling and it's really clean and fresh. So I feel really good eating this way on a busy weekday. And one of my favorite little tricks for any kind of grain bowl is to make some carrot noodles. And all you have to do for this is just take a large carrot, kind of press it down on the board to stabilize it. And then using a regular vegetable peeler, you don't need any kind of fancy tool, just run it lengthways and you'll get these really great carrot noodles and I find this is really great for a grain bowl because one they add a lot of texture and flavor and color and also they pair so well with the pickled red onions so then I'll add a grain of my choice and usually if I'm making rice I'll make extra because you know food prep so I went ahead and I put some warm rice down on the plate along with some greens a big handful of the carrot noodles and then the pickled red onions right on top and again the texture and flavor is so good because you've got that slight sweetness from the carrot and then that kind of zingy tanginess from the pickled red onions. It's so good. Then I love to add a little bit of crunch and texture with some cashews and then a little burst of sweetness to kind of play on the sweetness in the onion and the carrot with a handful of raisins. If you hate raisins, you could do olives or capers instead. That'd be a more savory version, but I love this combo. We've got so many different textures and colors and flavors, but everything is still pretty simple and you know, fresh. A trick whenever you're serving pickled red onions is to pair it with something creamy. So I do a couple of tablespoons of hummus here and there's just something about the creaminess from the hummus with the little bit of, you know, tanginess from the pickled red onion that is really a match made in heaven. And then if I'm super pressed for time, I'll just use a store-bought dressing. This one from Whole Foods works really well with this particular combination. But my favorite thing actually is just to put some lemon juice over the whole thing. I'll do some salt and pepper and sprinkle some cumin because again, it works so well with all these flavors. And it only looks this pretty when I'm taking a picture of it for Instagram. Usually I'll kind of put this in a bowl, mix it all together and eat it that way. And I just think it's absolute heaven. This is definitely one of my favorite recipes. Another thing I'm gonna make is a niçois salad. I love this salad because it has so many different colors and flavors. And a lot of times people think salads are not very filling, but because we're adding the potato, we're making it a lot more substantial. And again, because the potato was pre-boiled and then cooled, it has that really great creamy consistency that is just so wonderful in anything, but especially in this salad. 
And the only thing I did cook was I cooked the green beans, but I just blanched them. So it took like two minutes just when they turn bright green, they're ready to go. I put those on top and then olives just out of a jar, some roasted red peppers, again, right out of a jar, or you could do some cherry tomatoes or both. And then I'm going to use some of the pickled red onions. And again, you can see that really bright, pretty color. I like, I really love the tang and the color that it adds to any kind of salad. It's just a really nice contrast. And then I'm going to just put on some scallions just because I had them and why not? And then I'm going to put on this really easy tahini dressing that again is going to be in tomorrow's video. So make sure you check back. This is a really easy oil-free vinaigrette that I absolutely love. I think it works so well with this salad. And this is also a really great option to bring to work if you're looking for some packed lunch ideas. I like to kind of prep everything for the salad in one container and then pack the salad dressing on the side. I'll put that on top right before I eat it. And it's a really satisfying midday lunch that makes you feel energized without feeling too heavy. So love this for that. One of my favorite ways to make a pizza on a weeknight is to make a pita pizza because you don't have to roll out any dough and you don't have to do anything from scratch. I just take a pita and then I take some of this roasted red pepper dip, which will be in tomorrow's video. It is also in my ebook. So those of you who have that, this is in the toast section. So I do a thin layer of that and then I'm just gonna break up some of the cauliflower florets that we meal prepped earlier this week and I'm gonna break them up into little pieces. This is also a really great way to sneak some veggies into your diet or maybe into your kid's diet because it's just a pizza topping and I'm gonna really add a lot of flavor with some of the seasoning mix. This is actually my vegan sausage seasoning mix which I will put the recipe for in the description box below but you could do Italian herbs, you could do, I mean, there's like pizza seasonings that you can buy as well. That's kind of a nice blend of herbs. So really just whatever you like, but make sure you're pretty generous with the seasoning. And then of course it wouldn't be a pizza without some vegan cheese. So I'm gonna do some Parmesan here, some vegan parm. You could do a mix of vegan Parmesan and vegan mozzarella if you like, but I love the flavor of the Parmesan with this particular red pepper spread. Then I just pop that in the oven for just a couple of minutes to broil and there's really something about this red pepper dip that just makes everything you put it on taste like pizza. Even if I'm dipping cucumber slices in the dip, something about it is just very pizza-ish somehow. So I love that. So this made my kitchen smell like a pizza place, which I thought was great. And then I decided just to top it with some of those pickled red onions, some fresh basil, and then some red pepper flakes. And this was so good. This, like one or two of these with a big salad on the side, you know, in the middle of the week when you're just, you want something junk foody, but you also want something healthy and fast, fast, fast. This is way faster than ordering takeout, way healthier than ordering takeout and as you can see really really easy one of my favorite ways to use a cauliflower is to make a califredo sauce and it's just what it sounds like it's basically a healthy fettuccine alfredo and it's super super easy so I'll just put some noodles on to boil and while they cook I'll take two small garlic cloves and I'll put them into a blender along with two tablespoons of cashew butter this is basically replacing a roux which is normally how a cream sauce is thickened but that's made with butter and flour so not only is this a healthier option but it's also a lot faster since all you have to do is scoop it out of the jar and I do get questions sometimes about whether or not you can use almond butter or peanut butter instead and I don't recommend that at all because I do think that would majorly change the flavor but if you didn't want to use cashew butter you could do two tablespoons of vegan cream cheese instead and that would have a really similar effect I like to add some flavor with onion powder, salt and pepper. I add some almond milk and a little bit of water to the blender and then blend this until it's nice and smooth and creamy. Then I just strain the pasta and pour the sauce on top. I like to do this while it's still in the pan so the sauce can kind of cook together with the noodles for a minute or two, warm all the way through and then this is ready to serve. So literally in the time that it takes to boil some noodles, you can have a creamy homemade fettuccine alfredo sauce that actually has veggies in it and it's a lot healthier than the alternative or original version. I like to top it with some fresh chives. I think it looks pretty, also adds a really great flavor. And also some vegan Parmesan on top is a really great thing as well. This is one of those, like when you make this, you just feel like you're hacking your schedule because in 10 minutes or less, you have a pretty bomb dinner for a weeknight. 
So I'm Scandinavian and open face sandwiches is something I grew up eating. They're so simple. It's definitely kind of everyday food, but I find them very comforting. And the thing I like to do is kind of toast a piece of bread and then I'll either put some mustard or sometimes if I'm feeling a little extra, I'll do a fancy vegan mayo. This one is pesto flavored, so good. And then I'll add a piece of vegan cheese. This one is a smoked provolone and it's so delicious. Then I will go ahead and put the pickled red onions right on top and also some very thinly sliced cucumbers. This is such a great combination because the crunch and the kind of juiciness from the cucumbers and the pickled red onions pairs so well with the creaminess from the slice of cheese and that crunchiness from the toast. So it's lots of different flavors and textures going on even though this is an incredibly simple recipe as you can see. I also really love using pickled red onions on burgers and this combo in particular is a go-to for me. It's so flavorful. So I'll just toast up a burger bun and then I like to add some of my roasted red pepper dip which again is going to be in tomorrow's video and then I'll add some greens and then just a regular frozen veggie burger. Whichever kind you like best will work. I'll warm that up and then I'll go ahead and add some really thin cucumber slices along with a little bit more of that roasted red pepper dip and then I'll finish this with the pickled red onions. Now the trick here again to keep in mind is anytime you're making even just the most basic meal, if you have a creamy element and you have a pickled element, you're going to majorly transform that dish into something that is just a little bit more fun and each bite is going to kind of have a really great flavor and also texture combination that is going to make it a lot more enjoyable. So this combination is definitely one of my favorites but really keep this method with you with everything that you're doing because I really think you guys are going to love it. Finally, I'm going to be showing you how to use up the leftover cauliflower and also leftover potatoes with this baked vegetable casserole. This is so delicious and I think it's a great thing to bring to any kind of spring brunch you're going to. Like if you have an Easter brunch or something, this would be a really great side dish. And all you're going to do is take two cups of the leftover cauliflower and a cu I did a cup each of zucchini and then of also potato, but you could really change up the vegetables that you use. And then I'm going to season them with salt and pepper and pour this really delicious cashew sage cream sauce over the top. This will be in tomorrow's video, so stay tuned for this. It's super versatile as well. And it just creates this really great creamy sauce that is very similar. This is kind of a very similar dish to a potatoes au gratin or a scallop potatoes, but we're doing it with the veggies. And I really love the way that the sauce pairs with these veggies in particular. And then I like to make it a little bit crispy and golden brown on top just by adding some breadcrumbs to the top. I'll add a little bit more flavor with some dried thyme and then I'll sprinkle about two tablespoons of vegan Parmesan cheese on top. Then I bake this at 400 degrees until it's golden brown and then right at the end I like to put the broiler on. Keep an eye on it but keep the broiler on and then just let it kind of get really really crispy and I love those little bits that are that crispy cheese with the creamy vegetables and potatoes and it's just the best combination so I recommend doing that and this is really great like I said as a side dish but definitely also something you could have as a main with you know a little green salad on the side something that's just simply dressed with the vinaigrette this would pair really really well and I love sprinkling chives or parsley on top it just kind of freshens everything up and adds a really nice pop of color as well all right guys that's it for this video again make sure you check out tomorrow's video where I'm gonna be showing you how I made all of the sauces that I featured in this video they're super super easy it's gonna be quick and snappy and I think you guys are gonna love it so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video it will be up tomorrow morning and if you haven't already seen Jasmine and Chris's video hit the link in the description box below to watch that now for more inspiration and I will see you guys in a video very soon bye